Piece Monkey T. King of the Pirates. One Piece, motherfucker. One Piece. Hey guys, what's up? It's me, BBB Luffy M2, bringing you the first episode of the Cartoon Theories episode of Cartoon Series. Uh, one more thanks to Faint Wee for letting me post his video on my my video on his channel. Jesus Christ, I can't speak today. And um, yeah, that's it. So let's get this started. So the first theory we're doing is Anna and Eddie, since it inspired me to do this series, and it's pretty freaking dark. So the cul-de-sac is basically purgatory, and all the kids there have died. The cul-de-sac was always there, even before it was there in real time, as a purgatory of some sort for kids who died. And the first person to arrive was Rolf. Now, he died in 1903. His family moved from, I forget what country. Uh, doesn't really say what country he was, but he moved to the neighborhood when it was still just farmlands. And so he was a farmer's son, as he says, son of a shepherd and all that stuff. But one day, he was run over by a bull trying to st one that escaped, and that's how he died. That's why you don't really see any bulls in his um, farm, just the cows. Now, the second person to die was Johnny. Johnny died in 1920 because he was schizophrenic, right? And he had no friends. He was on the farmland, but he didn't farm, so he had nothing to do. Since he had no friends, he made Plank as his only friend. Now, when he died of tuberculosis in 1920, he brought Plank with him as his only friend, but then he developed friends in the cul-de-sac. Next person to die was Eddie. Eddie was born in New York City, but he moved to the neighborhood in 1932. Just as the Great Depression was hitting, um, was hitting America... Uh, Eddie basically started doing scams on people And one day, running away from people that he did a scam on in the neighborhood He ran into the river and drowned uh, The next people to come were Sarah and Ed Now Sarah and Ed were born during World War II Or around World War II Their father was a GI who died in um, during the war And so each, way had, each kid had a different way of coping Sarah looked up to her mother Who was bossy and always loud and obnoxious Kind of, just like Sarah and so she looked to her because she had no father figure to look up to. And God damn it, I dropped my script. And that's why she's always so mean to everybody. Ed took the different approach. Ed shut himself in his room with like the horror movies and comic books that were becoming popular during that age. And so everyone thought he was retarded because that's all he did. Just watch movies and read comic books. I can relate to that. I, I do a lot of that. I don't have no life. And I have social life. I, I don't. I. Screw it. Screw what I just said. Just remember the theory. Okay, next to come was Naz. Now, Naz is a very dark story. Naz was born a hippie. No shit. Um, to hippie parents. Again, no shit. And um, in 1979, I believe it was, um, a serial killer broke out of prison, went into Naz's home, killed their family, raped Naz, and then killed Naz. So, yeah, one of the darker theories in there. Um, I have to say that's probably my least favorite because it's just how scary it is and how likable a person Naz is. And that's why in the cul sac her parents never show up. Her, hers is the only parents that she never even mentions, really. Um, and that's why she always has time to party because she has no parents. Next kid to arrive was Double D. Uh, Double D, his parents, always just communicated with him sticky notes and they were really big businessmen. So they trained him to be smart and educated. That's why he did a lot of experiments and was always so neat and tidy and like brain smart. One day doing an experiment though, there was a gas leak and in an experiment using a Bunsen burner, shit blew up and he died. And that's why he wears a hat on his head to cover up the scars and like some people say even his brain's popping out of his head from that explosion. I don't know if that's really it, why he wears the hat, but... The actually like constitute this theory is that in the big picture show movie, the final like part of the show, um, Ed get Ed Double D gets his hat taken off, and Eddie says, "Oh my God, I can't look." And Ed says, "Does it hurt Double D?" And uh, that's what I'm trying to say here. Okay, next was Kevin. Now Kevin had a very abusive father who was a drunk, and so whenever Kevin would do was he would escape on his bicycle and go bully other kids because that's all he knew how to do. One day, his father got really drunk and um, beat him up to, well, beat Kevin to death. And so, that's why in the afterlife, in Purgatory, Kevin loves his bike, always bullies the Eds, and his father is a very distant person who he never really sees and gives him jawbreakers all the time. Now, the last person to die, oh, this was 1990, by the way. The last person to come to cul-de-sac was Jimmy. Now, Jimmy had leukemia, which explains why he's so pale all the time and very frail. Um... He died in 2000 when his parents moved to the cul-de-sac, and uh, it was basically what it looks like now in the show. Um, he died in his bed, but he was so lonely all the time, and he died lonely because his parents never let him actually go out of the house. Um, then he finally died in 2000. 
And now, the finally, the Canker Sisters. Now, the Canker Sisters never died. They were born into purgatory. They are the guardians of the purgatory. Um, they're like succubi in human lore, I guess you could say. Uh, they always, that's why they always appear whenever they, they always appear in random places and they're always, no matter where they are, they're always somehow there. And, um, they're attracted to the Eds because they find them as the easiest targets, the weakest targets. The retarded one, the scamming one, the smart one who's very frail. Um, yeah, so that's why, and that's why they're also loathed by all the kids because they always torment all the kids because that's what their job is, to make their lives a hell. So that's it for the theory guy. Uh, thank you, thank guys. Thank you for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Next episode will either be Jimmy Neutron, Rugrats, or Adventure Time. I haven't decided yet. And um, I found a solution to my late George problem on the internet. I will be able to record stuff. I'll just plug my HDMI and stuff into my like Roxio and like um just record that way. But if I get my dad, then use his phone. I can tether it to my computer and use it that way. Expect a couple of vlogs as well. And um, I'll be seeing you guys either during vacation. If I don't post anything during vacation, it means I failed and that you'll see me next week. So thank you guys. This is the last video before vacation's over. I hope you enjoyed it and as much as I did because I'm really interested in this kind of shit now. And uh, I know it's kind of creepy, but I don't know. It's just interesting stuff. And uh, I'll see you next time.